Hello, my name is Jeb Sherrill, and welcome to the next episode of The Chair System. If you haven't been with us before, that's okay. I will put links at the end of this video so you can catch up. All you really need to know is that this is the channel where we teach you how to be a guitar soloing god, or, you know, something like that. And we do it all using this very simple shape called the chair. Now, I've had a few people ask me what I mean by the chair, and, well, it's actually a pretty good question. But it's not terribly mystical. It's really just, well, that it kind of looks like a chair. That's really about it. This is the back of the chair. This is the back leg of the chair, the front leg of the chair, and you could kind of see this line right here as the seat. So each one of these just kind of looks like a chair. And today we're going to add to that shape because for right now, every single note on here, or should I say every interval, because I'm not really teaching lettered notes right now. I just want you to learn the intervals because that's all that matters. You can base one of these chair shapes on any note and it works. It will be a pentatonic scale, which is just the beginning of everything we're going to do. Right now, all of these intervals are one step apart, so they're one threes. In other words, you play them with your index finger and your ring finger. Now, you may play that in a different way later, but for the moment, this is just the easiest way to show it. Today, we're going to expand that shape just a little bit with something I call bridges. Now, you can look at these bridges as another shape, or you can just look at them as what I kind of look at them, which is just bridges between the chairs. Because this whole neck is covered in chairs, the, this stripe right here that you see of chairs exists here, and it exists down here too. And all of them are linked by these one fours. In other words, the index finger and the pinky finger, which means that there are two frets in between. Now, some of you have already probably noticed that the end of this bridge is actually the top of this final chair. And that's what they're all like. I'm just not showing the rest of the chairs at the moment because you're going to learn them later. At the moment, all that's necessary is to understand the shapes and understand right notes because that's what all of these are. These are right notes. The reason we're beginning with pentatonic notes is that they all sound good. They will all always sound good with each other because they're all far enough apart. Look at them as the strongest notes within a scale, either a minor scale or a major scale, it doesn't matter. These are always going to be the strongest notes and therefore they're the easiest to use at first. And they're going to get you playing really, really fast. And these notes on the bridges are not different notes because all of them are just part of other chairs. So they're actually repeats of these notes in this area. All you're going to do is the same thing you've been doing for the last few lessons, which is just kind of playing around or noodling over these chairs. And I know some people look at noodling as a bad thing. At the beginning, it really isn't. And even later on, you'll find that there's kind of useful noodling and not so useful noodling. But for the moment, all you're doing is playing notes and you're playing right notes and that's all that matters. So just be imaginative, just play around on it, get used to going down two more, at, or, or rather to these two notes at the bottom of each chair, because every chair on the fretboard is going to have those two notes three steps underneath, or one four, one fours, as I said. 
The only ones that won't are, of course, chairs that are so close to the bottom that it goes off the edge. But for most of the, the vast majority of the chairs all over the fretboard are going to have this. What you're going to later learn is that those bridges also exist above each chair, just like they exist below each chair. But we're going to cover that in another lesson. For now, the really cool thing about this is that it's kind of teaching you backwards. Instead of going from horizontal playing to diagonal playing or vertical playing, you're learning diagonal playing first, which is kind of more difficult. It makes your hands work more. It makes them do more. They can't settle into these nice simple patterns that most people use when they use a box. You can't do that with this. So what they're forcing you to do is play these longer patterns and with these bridges, you're going to slowly start learning how you can play more horizontally because these two are right beside these two. So just play around with that. Play around with adding those two notes under each chair. If you want to get more inventive, you can shift that chair to somewhere else. You can shift it up a half step, down a half step, up and down a whole step. It doesn't really matter. You can put one anywhere on the fretboard and just get used to making one of these chair shapes and then adding these bridges to it. And in the next lesson, we're going to start getting into the really exciting stuff because once you understand this simple pattern, these three chairs and the bridges that come off it, you will very easily be able to start improvising, which is what we're really going towards. So I will see you guys in the next video.